All right, once again, it's been uh, eternity since I posted a YouTube video on my truck and what's going on with it. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if, yeah, it's got a parachute. Maybe you guys saw that. I don't know if I've posted that or not. Anyway, we've, uh, we're doing some upgrades to it because we are taking it to Vegas this next week for Streetcar Super Nationals. It's one of the races I like to do. It's just a fun race. Um, but anyway, we've got, uh, we've relocated our battery and that is right there, up under there. And we got a battery kill there and our charge lugs. A lot of heavy cable had to go forward and then to bring the alternator all the way back so that you can just uh, kill that <clears throat> on the fly. Anyway, we got all that going and today we're working on something else. The last time I was at the track, <clears throat> the track official has said he had seen my truck. This is the guy at the starting line. He said he'd seen my truck many times and I'm making too, making too much power for these uh, stock axles and stuff and he's right. <clears throat> so. This, this is just a stock 33 spline, uh, 9.4 inch ring gear, or they call it a 14 bolt semi float that I built my four link on. And high in sight, you know, maybe I would have done a nine inch or something else, but um, yeah, the, the C-clips have got to go. Um, you really can't rely on disc brakes to, uh, to keep it all together for you um, if a C-clip goes. But anyway, nobody that I was aware of made a uh, C-Clip Eliminator kit for a 14-bolt semi-float. And then uh, Lawrence Tolman, who is local to me here, he's out of uh, Saratoga Springs. Um, you guys might follow his channel or see some of his stuff he does on his trucks and cars and stuff. Told me about <clears throat> this company here. Got torque differential, and this is a sticker they sent me here to go on the back window. But anyway, they uh, they have a solution, and we're going to give that a go today. We've got their axles here from Dutchman. Um, I think these are Dutchman axles, Dutchman Motorsports. Up out of Idaho is where these ship from. But anyway, these are their Chromoly um, 33 spline axles. But you can see they're set up for C-clip eliminators. And one thing that it's uh, a little different is they're running a roller taper bearing instead of just a straight roller bearing. And this is something I don't see a lot um, in the, uh, the C-clip elim eliminator. I can't say that word today. Um, set up stuff. But anyway, they said they've had really good luck with these. These are their billet backing plates that we have to put on and the hardware kit and some lug nuts. But anyway, we gotta do some modifications to this today. Uh, first step, <clears throat> nothing too exciting. Take the wheels off, take the brakes apart, take the rear diff cover off. I don't have a uh, standard um, G80, they call it, the, the what came with it. The G80's over on the shelf over there. In one of my previous videos, I put in a uh, I don't know if I put it on YouTube or Instagram, but I put a true track in there. So that's a 9.5 inch true track. And we're gonna keep that in there, but we're just gonna go ahead and get the axles out. So we can start modifying the two bends so that we can get those axles in. So that's today's goal and we'll uh, update it as we go. Okay, so we have our wheels off here and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and remove, there's some cobwebs that tells you how much I drive this thing. We're gonna remove the uh, brakes and the, so the caliper comes off. We'll also remove the um, caliper bracket. So everything comes off so we can remove the rotor and then we can <clears throat> get the axles out. So that's the first step is to get rid of the brakes, the rotors, and then we can come in here and uh, undo that back there and get those C-clips out of there. For those of you who haven't seen this, this is uh, my C-notched, it's not C-notched, that's a, whatever, I don't know what to call a notch, they call that, but um that's the notch i have for this here when i lowered it that i put into it and then also um these are my four link brackets here that are permanently welded obviously to that and then there's my four link set up in the front all gusseted and we get some light up there you can see how that ties in to the frame rail there anyway let's get these uh brakes off okay we've got the brakes removed the rotors are off Pads and uh, brackets are off, calipers are just hanging. 
light aluminum, I'm not too worried about that. Um, and now we're gonna open up the differential and uh, undo our axles and pull them out. That's the next step. Okay, we've got the rear diff cover off and everything looks really good. We had uh, virtually uh, not a lot of metal at all. There's a, there's a magnet there, but that's normal what's on it there. And uh, this is our stock gear set. We don't have any aftermarket gear set in here. This is what came in the Chevy truck that this uh, differential came out of. And for those that are wondering, this differential came out of a uh, um, 2008 um, Vortec Max uh, 1500. And that's where you get the disc brake combo with uh, the 9.5. And it bolts right into your leaf springs. Even though I don't have leaves, I have, you know, a four link. If you're interested, you can get a direct drop in with a 9.5 in it um, out of that year Vortec Max. They're hard to come by. I got this for a pretty good deal. It's about 750 bucks for this differential way back when. And what we're gonna do now, and you can tell this is a true track. I got Taiwanese parts in here, eating uh, subs out their stuff to, to uh, Taiwan. Anyway, it's been a really good differential. I've had no issues with it. It hooks up and goes. But we're gonna bring it around. We got the transmission in neutral. There we go. Now we expose our spacer plug and we gotta go get a set of snap rings. Pliers, not snap rings, but pliers. Run over to the transmission bench here. And I think these ought to do. We'll come back over here. Obviously gonna be a bit different on a G80 or a open diff. That's how it usually goes, kind of left-handed too. Come on, baby. Talk to me, Goose. We got it. There she is. And there she goes, right there. Now, we can set this down here and open up this guy. As you're said and done with slippery fingers. Oh, come on. There we are. And there's our spacer rolling out with it. That could have been bad. <laughs> Landed right on the edge of my pan there and almost dipped it over. So I've got our spacer out here. And then that was the end cap that goes to the, and we don't need any of these parts anymore with this setup. You can see now my C-clips, those copper guys there. All we simply have to do now is come over here to the axle end, push it in. I say simply, it's crusty. I have to beat on it, we'll see. You can see it's come out quite a bit. We'll spin it around here. And we'll be able to get that out in a minute. Let's see if this one will go in any easier. That one went in a lot easier. So with that being said, I just gotta grab a magnet and pull those guys out of there. Let's see what we can do here um, with our fingers. Probably not too much. I'm gonna grab a magnet, get those out, and then we can slide the axles right out the tubes. All right, so we have got these out and they look pretty good, pretty normal. <clears throat> um, for anyone who doesn't know, this is all that holds in your axles. Um, if you have a drum brake, for example, but uh, you turn a corner, if you lose a C-clip or you break an axle on the starting line, out it comes because this is what holds it on the very end of the axle. And my axles are ready to come out now. So we can see we've got those C-clips out. You can see how they go in there around those axles. And then you pull the axle back and it sets back in a recess back there that holds it in. But we can go ahead and safely pull these out now. <clears throat> Let's grab older one. Easier said than done. Because they're stuck in there. They're a tight fit in those splines in that tree track. So we're gonna have to get a pry bar here. And carefully leverage these out of here. There it comes there, that one's ready to go. Over here. 
it was tight getting the C-clips out, I'll say that much. There she comes. You can see it there. Okay. Now that we've got them out of the splines, they'll come right out. So grab, this is hard doing one handed. Pull that axle there. Normally you'd want to be really careful of the seal. I'm not worried about it because we're going to be replacing all that. So let's pull this axle out. Okay. And you can see how that works. That C-clip, stop that from moving. Goes on the ends of these axles, just like that. And then there's a recess in the side gear that doesn't let it come out the axle tube. So that's all that holds your axle in. Some people argue the disc brakes hold it in and they can and they would. And I've had that exact scenario happen on a Fox body with a 28 spline axle. I broke it on the starting line and then it did retain the axle, but it, obviously I got out of it right, right away. I, I don't think it would have gone down the track. It would have tore everything up. Okay, so back on track here. New axles that need to go in. And we've got these axles out. Now we don't need to do anything else with that differential. We just need to work on the ends here. And now we're gonna be taking off the um, brake plates here. Bunch of stuff here so we can modify the tube ends so they'll fit those adapters. So that's what's next on our list. All right. Okay, what we did from the last step was just remove the four bolts that go into here, that go through the backing plate there. And then also the uh, brake line bolt. It's a 13 millimeter on the back. And then the two hold downs for the one piece shoe that is the parking brake. Once I took that off, we just tap the back of the bracket that is on the back of the backing plate. We just tapped that guy and it popped right off. And then we also stuck a crowbar in here and popped the, the oil seal out. We'll be no longer using those seals anymore. Now next I gotta get out these roller bearings. Um, so that is a next big deal I gotta do. Um, and I don't have the right tool for it, but I'm gonna make one, so we'll make it work. But anyway, we'll get these out. Then I'm gonna clean this end up here. And I measured this with my uh, caliper, which I just set down somewhere, which I don't know where I set it, which is typical of me. And this is, per the instructions, you measure from this face here to this, and you see how wide this step is, okay? And I've got the shorter one, which is uh, 160 thousandths, which kind of sucks, because now I've got to measure out and leave it at about 250 thousandths, about a quarter inch. And so I've got to leave a reliable little piece of tube sticking out of here all the way around. And then we cut, we cut this off. So we'll pull the bearing, clean this up, clean this up with a little bit of a sanding process and then um, mark this carefully. And then we'll carefully cut that with a four inch uh, uh, grinder with the cutoff wheel on it. And we'll get that cleaned up really well. That's per the instructions and we'll go from there. All right, so we've cleaned the housing up really good with the, that deal right there. Heavy duty scotch bright on that. Kind of getting a really good clean register, get all the rust knocked off. And when we measure this register here, we're getting about 170,000. So we were hoping it was gonna be the 225,000 so we could just flush it, cut the tube right flush with this, but that's not gonna be the case. We need to leave some extra. So you have to really make a good clean cut and bring it out about to 250 thousandths maximum, 225 to 250. So we're gonna go ahead and what I've come up with is a large snap ring here that I can stretch over the tube and this is about 80 thousandths thick. So we'll seat this up right against the back of that there and then use this as a, as a pattern to carefully guide along and cut. And that should leave us, you know, 170 plus uh, this is 79,000, so it'll be right about 250. We'll double check our work when we're done. If we have to, you know, trim it down or just, you know, massage it with a, a grinder a little bit, we will. But I think this is a good idea just to get a good spacing off this backing here. Let's see if we can get this on there and see how that looks. Now, also, I did break down and get the right bearing puller and slide hammer so I could knock these bearings out. Came out super easy. I was really pleased with how that turned out. So now I have those. I've never had to do these, but anyway... Now that we've got that, it makes pulling those out real easy. 
and we're gonna get this mocked up so we can get our cut made. So we'll see if the snap ring will go on here. All right, so getting that snap ring on there proved to be a little tougher than I thought, but we did get it on there. And you can see we've got a gap there, so we'll rotate it around as we make our cut. But most of it is covered. So now what I'm looking for is coming up square on that edge and then extending over here to the shoulder. Sorry, I'm always getting out of uh, where I need to be a focus. So over there and lo and behold, 250. Wow. On the money. And you can notice there's a little recess underneath the uh, backing plate there or the actual mounting surface. And you don't want to get into that. Just right on to the edge there. But we're right at 250 on the money with this setup. So we're going to try to cut right along that and use that as a guide. All right, so the snap ring worked really well and you can see it left the lip all the way around and I've polished that down and polished the inside here so there's no sharp edges for the O-ring on the uh, billet uh, retainer so it won't get cut as the O-ring goes in. One thing that's really odd about this and uh, and maybe some of you will experience this too if you use this kit, I measured up here from, the, from this register here to here and I got about 175 thousandths. But down here, I should have measured all the way around before I did it, I got about 200 thousandths. So that tells me that this block isn't exactly true where it was welded on from GM. I've got varying measurements all the way around. Um, 175 to, to 2 to 205, somewhere down here. So I've kind of stepped this a little bit. I polished it down to average under 250 from here to the flange everywhere I go. Just a little odd that that's not squared on there. I don't know if uh, the guys at Just Torque have seen that as well, but yeah, we're getting different measurements and that's using some pretty uh, pretty good tools. Um, I'm using an actual depth gauge here that we cannot, you know, that I was measuring um, to, to set that anyway. Um, yeah, so first we measured with the, just a straight up dial caliper that uh, most people would have. But then we started doing that and I can definitely see that there's about 25 thousandths of, of uh, distortion between different parts of this flange. Anyway, I don't think it's gonna be that critical. I've got what I think I need to have here. We're gonna mock it all up and make sure that we don't have any interference with anything. And we're, we're gonna start by putting the backing plate back on and then put the, the actual um, retainer on the end of the tube there and see where it, where it works. So we'll go from there. All right, here we're just uh, flushing off these bosses here per the instructions. And I gotta leave these alone, I think. I hope they're gonna clear, we're gonna find out. But I've already flushed the, this one over here, this one here, and there's some casting numbers that need to be taken down, like these here. And we'll take this casting off here. We're gonna leave these two. These are for a parking brake shoe that bolts on there. But we're gonna knock these down, clean all this up. So we have a nice smooth surface for that uh, part to mount on there. But we're halfway through it. We're just using a Milwaukee cordless with, a, uh, with one of these flap discs on here and we're knocking it down. All right, I just wanted to make a quick short uh, notation about some of the measurements that we encountered here. Per the instructions, you're supposed to measure um, the register for the, uh, for the uh, brake housing. And I did right here so you measure going off of this off that register there to the face of that let me get in there a little closer you don't want it to go in that groove but right above it and i was getting about 170 there but then down here i should have measured all around i was getting closer to 210 and i started measuring and this whole this whole plate from the factory is not welded on exactly true um, for sure and I don't know how critical it was for them to get it perfectly true but it's not so I cleaned this all up with uh, you know some abrasive cloth not cloth but uh, wheels and stuff like that to make sure I get an accurate measurement but then as I added more material with the tube and the c-clip which you saw earlier um, I came out and I did an overall measurement and the overall measurement I was using a depth gauge I use this for building transmissions and stuff but I was uh, then measuring to the face from here. And I was getting, you know, I was getting close to 250, but then I'd get up over here like 280, 290. And so what I had to do 
was taper it. So I'm trying to keep it 250 all the way around. We'll see if that works out in the end, but uh, just so you guys know, you guys might run into some taper where this is a little bit not welded on, totally true, where, well, this register here, not the pipe that I left, but that register to the face might be a little bit out of true all the way around, just so you guys are aware. Okay, so we are uh, doing a couple of verifications and making sure everything's gonna fit up right. That's what we're working on right now. Um, what I've done is put the brake shoe back on, completely installed it, um, attached it so it's pinned down like it should be. And I've, if you've noticed, I've also used some of the old hardware and I've bolted the, the actual whole entire backing plate down. Uh, you can see the old bolt under there and one in the opposite corner there. So I got two bolts holding the backing plate on. Then I've used the other two bolts here just to align this and pull it in. And the reason I'm doing that is to, cause you have to make some relief cuts here on these little brackets here. So simply I've got, you know, you can kind of see where I'm gonna have to cut that out there. And I'm just gonna have to fade it off right into this area there. It's hard to get under with my Sharpie, but I just know that if I take it to that other little mark right that I've got farther down, and just round it off, that'll clear. I wanna leave as much meat as I can, so I'll leave that line. I'll leave that line, and then that block will slide in there. And on the other side, let me get some light down there. This is where I've opted to use the relief that's built into it. Um, not a bad idea if they'd make both sides like that. See how there's a relief cut there? And that one will drop down without any modification. So if they made that same relief, on both sides, it would drop in and clear these. We wouldn't have to modify this at all. But uh, the other thing I was also doing was, let me take this off real quick so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. Put my pen away. So we'll go ahead and take off the block here real quick. And we just lightly put that down just to knock it up. Hang on real fast. Okay. Sorry, not a very good picture, just wobbling around. Okay, so on, I'm gonna remove those as well. But what you can, what you notice here is the amount of, the, I measured the amount of stick out this has until the seal is uh, contacted. So basically from this lip here, where my nail's touching, all the way inboard. And I wanna make sure I had enough seal engagement into the extra axle tube that I left, okay? And you can see this is the register and this is the axle tube I left. And hopefully you guys don't even have to do this. Hopefully you have the longer register and you can just go flush, but mine was not that case. So, and as I mentioned, I had to kind of blend it to, because it had several different measurements around. Anyway, the whole point of doing that, measuring that and making sure that the seal would, would so the seal is gonna seal right in this area here. Not up on this shoulder, but on this little lip that's left, okay? So what I was doing is taking a flat edge from across, this barely reaches here. It reaches both sides, just barely here. So you can see I'm touching both sides of the actual um, backing plate bracket that has been polished down. And you can see that my tube is not too long because none of it protrudes out and hits the block. So this represents, this straight line represents where that billet block will mount down. And so we're not gonna be hitting the back of it, but we've also measured with feeler gauges down between in that gap there. And we've measured that our gap is significantly less than the protrusion going in with the seal. So that just tells me I'll have a good contact seal in here. I hope this is making sense what I'm trying to say. But with this down flush, that seal will positive positively engage all of this around in here. We won't have it backed out. So we left this long enough. I could have left it longer, I found out, but it's gonna be fine where it's at. So that's what we wanna make sure, we don't have any leaks there. So we're getting ready to put this plate on now. I have to modify this, we're gonna cut this now. I'll just probably uh, seal this up so we don't get any debris. I'll probably just cut it out, blow it all out. We'll bolt the sucker down. Okay, so we cut that tab down there. You can see I clearance that there. There's just a little enough uh, left over there to index it in its slot. And then we uh, go ahead and we went ahead and put down the, the billet plate, Loctite of these. We still got to torque them, but 
what I wanted to show you is we can take a pick now and we can run it back on the back side here and we can feel our axle tube right there. And it's, we can get a pick. We can still catch the edge of a pick on the axle tube all the way around, which means, which we verified earlier with the flat, that flat gauge, that it wasn't gonna hit the billet block. You gotta make sure that your tube is below the billet block so it doesn't hit, but I can just barely feel the lip just enough all the way around so I know that it's not coming out too far, but yet I have enough indention here with the O-ring to make the seal on the end of the tube. So that's what we're looking for. And it bolted on really nicely. And now we're just getting ready to set an axle in there. And uh, we gotta torque these first. Then we're gonna put our axle in and torque that baby down and see how it works. Be right back. All right, the axle went in just like clockwork, uh, went right in there and we got to the seal and it was pretty hard to push the seal in, which is expected. So we got one bolt started and obviously most axles, even performance axles, will give you a, an access hole, which is really nice to get around to um, the parts you need to get at one at a time. So we go ahead and we tighten that down in there and then we tried to get one right across. We couldn't get it, it was too, just not quite there. So we got the one next to it, tightened it down a little bit, and then we're able to get that one. And then we went back and forth, drew the axle all the way in, and then tightened them all up. So really nice, uh, went in like I nice and smooth. Um, I can it feels like there's quite a bit of bearing preload, which is probably gonna you know loosen up with a little bit of time. But um, then we went and checked our axle length and just seeing how it came out. And you can see in there if yeah there it is if it'll show it. There's our axle fully engaging the side gear of the true track, just right length. And now we gotta do the other side. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the brakes on this and make sure everything does what it should. But uh, there we go, we got it in there. It looks like it's gonna work. All right, so everything went on as expected. Brakes are back on, um, pretty ugly rotors. Don't judge me. These are racing rotors, if you haven't noticed. That's what the bluing's all about. But anyway, um, yeah, all went on good. Seems to be just like it's supposed to be. Now, obviously, repeat on the other side. I took a lot of time on this one just because I want to make sure that this was going to work. And I didn't want to cut off one axle tube or both at the same time if they both had problems. I want to learn from this side and take it over that. And I recommend you do the same if you're doing this installation just to make sure that it all works in your application. But... Everything's in there. Well, with uh, brakes dragging, like expected. Um, hey, couldn't ask for more. I got what I needed. Good luck, guys.